of the Western anxiety about boundaries is something that we are very proud of, that we believe we invented. We call it the ego. Sometimes we call it the democratic individual. Uh, we say no, no Eastern society could have produced this. We took this from the Greeks. We perfected it through the Romans. We brought it up through the medieval period. John Locke and Thomas Hobbes and all those folks fixed it up for us in the 18th century. Thomas Jefferson ironed out the wrinkles. And modern America is the shining example of uh, what you can do if you empower the ego, the citizen, the individual. We want nothing of tribalism, still less of collectivism, and God forbid, nothing whatsoever to do with communism. See, all these, all these things uh, set us going. Uh, but in fact, the ego is appropriate only to a certain point. I mean, yes, we need egos so that when you take someone to dinner at a reasonable restaurant, you place food in your mouth, not their mouth. <laughs> this, is, this is what the ego is for. It tells you who pays. <clears throat> um, but in fact, what the ego is, is the return to consciousness of this psychic structure related to the patterns of dominance. And the way I think of the ego is it's like a cyst or a calcareous growth or a tumor that gets going in the personality. And if not treated, it becomes chronic. And then there is no cure. There can only be you know, a certain amount of maintenance and uh, medication of it. But it's, it's incurable, except unless we resort to not only non-prescription drugs, but uh, uh, drugs currently illegal. In other words, the psychedelics, through this boundary dissolving function, dissolve that boundary as well. And so they promote a larger sense of the world than the values of uh, capitalism, competitiveness, object fetishism, property acquisition and the bottom line in power.